Welcome to Future Bank Today, a community dedicated to driving innovation in our financial institutions. This is your host, Jim Kittredge, and today's episode is, Will Biometrics Be Security Savior? One of the fastest growing segments in all of security is the use of biometrics as an additional security layer for authentication. Today, biometric technology would include things such as finger or palm printing, including even more advanced techniques such as vein matching, retinal scans, although I'm always amazed that we call it retinal scans because we're actually scanning the iris, so I think more accurately should be called the iris scans, voice printing, such as those offered by Nuance where you scan a person's voice and are able to identify that person to a high degree of accuracy depending on the number of compute cycles you're willing to dedicate to that computation. We have facial recognition, which is clearly being led by Facebook. And there is even things such as behavioral fingerprinting. What is behavioral fingerprinting? Well, what it does is it measures the speed that you type, the way you move your hands on a device, how hard you press down, how you use your mouse, what order you do things in. Quite frankly, using these very sophisticated algorithms, they have actually gotten behavioral fingerprinting to be as accurate as 95%. In fact, any unique biology can be turned into a biometric security layer. And that would include far-fetched things such as DNA fingerprinting. Although, we are a long way away from that aspect becoming commonplace. So why all of the focus on biometrics now? Well, clearly, passwords, as we have discussed in the past, are simply not enough, especially if we force lengthy and sophisticated ones on the ever-growing use of mobile users. I don't know about you, but typing in 15 or 20 digits with special characters on my mobile phone is not a trivial exercise. The major forces driving biometric adoption are really straightforward. First, we have the need for more sophisticated security measures. As we've already said, passwords aren't cutting it. Secondly, the hassle of multi-factor authentication has become truly apparent. And thirdly, there is increased availability of biometric hardware, in particular with our smartphones. There are five major benefits of biometric technology in the marketplace today. The first is that biometric characteristics, by definition, are unique. Secondly, it's really difficult for the bad doers of the world to actually spoof the system. Thirdly, and just as important, is it leaves a beautiful audit trail of exactly who did what. Fourthly, because of its convenience, it is almost a near-perfect second-factor authentication process. And fifthly, and the one I think that most of us can appreciate the most, is that we always carry them with us. There's no need to remember it or bring it along with us. So will biometrics be the savior for bank security? I believe the answer is yes. However, we have to acknowledge there are some serious limitations. So let's discuss them. First. The biggest concern of all is if my password is hacked, I can easily reset it and make a new one. My fingerprint is hacked, how do I change my fingerprint? Addressing that concern, it has been suggested that we store those biometric images like we do passwords today, using encryption and decryption through hashing techniques. However, those work really well with passwords, as they're only 10 digits and 26 letters and a handful of special characters. Biometrics, on the other hand, such as a fingerprint, would have almost an unlimited number of possibilities and decrypting an encrypted picture is anything but trivial. And actually, a better answer has recently been developed, where a random set of data points is all that is recorded and stored. So if you took a picture of a fingerprint, you wouldn't take the whole fingerprint but maybe a dozen or two dozen specific points on a fingerprint, and that's what you would use to identify the individual, rather than storing the entire fingerprint online. So if it was ever hacked, you would just take another image of the finger with a different set of random data points, 
and you would accomplish, much like you do with a password, a complete reset. So far, this looks really promising across all of the biometric solutions. Secondly, while definitely more difficult, spoofing will still be a major risk. As an example, iPhones today could be opened with a silicon gel imprint of a fingerprint, and Android could be opened with a high-resolution picture of the person, and on and on. And let's recognize, we leave our fingerprints everywhere, and our faces are all over social media. And while advanced techniques are being developed to rectify this issue, with things like pulse detection or facial micro-movements, temperature sensing, and things like that, those are just additional obstacles for those hackers to overcome, which you know they eventually will. And lastly, the biggest challenge to biometrics is that somewhere along in the process, there has to be a physical device needed to read the biometric retrieval information. And like all other things hardware, once it's available to banks, it will soon be available to cyber criminals where they can test and test and develop workarounds at will. Yes, it might take some time, but there's never been a piece of hardware that's been generally available that has not ultimately been cracked. So what's the bottom line? I think there are a few key takeaways. First, the time for biometrics is now. It is the perfect second factor authentication, as we don't need to make it so burdensome that we have to get to the 100% absolutely guarantee that that's that person, but as a second factor allows for a simple, is my phone near? Does my fingerprint on my phone work? Is that the picture of me? It works as a perfect second factor authentication. Second takeaway should be, it definitely has limitations, and we should understand those limitations going in. And the third and most important piece to this is, under no circumstances should you store an entire image of any biometric data. What I mean by that is never store a person's entire face or entire fingerprint or iris scan or any of those such things. And the reason for that is, should your system ever be hacked, the liability of not being able to change that data in the future could be quite substantial. Thank you for your time today. And stay tuned for next week we begin a mini-series on why your company can't innovate and what you could do about it.